we are into right now. We can see no Talia's just yet. As LeBlanc and Shen band away for Saint, the answer is the Malzahar and the Poppy here for IG. Yeah, so IG still remembers the Poppy. Don't want to deal with it. Take the Malzahar away just as well. Seems like IG, or specifically Rookie, if you're on blue side, he doesn't want to play. If he's on purple side, doesn't want to play it. So just ban it out. Don't even deal with it. Yeah, just get rid of it. As Talia is going to be the final ban here for Saint. Of course, a bit of extra flexibility on the blue side. We'll see what IG decide to take away as the final ban. Of course, they took Hecarim first pick, and Braum was banned away last time around as well, as Vladimir is going to be the ban. So Saint can look at the horse. They can also look at that Braum if they'd like to as well. Exactly. So it seemed like Saint didn't want to play with the idea of first picking Natalia. Don't want to even touch that. So, yeah, exactly. They can just go for the Hecarim. I'm not sure if that's their, uh, if that's Shimin's style. Yeah. Sure, he's more comfortable on the grave, so the Braum might just be the go-to pick here. Hey, it may not be Chimin style, but we do know that Hecarim is Acorn style if we look back in the history books a little bit. Way back, going right back into that time machine. Yeah. <laughs> just like back in the day when Acorn <laughs> was just... I mean, that's time. a flank teleport, if ever there was one. <laughs> Saint are taking their time to find this pick. 14 seconds to go. Braum considered... Victor, of course, was banned in the first series. Yeah, true. I don't think his nerfs really... Like, his nerfs really just pretty much means that your jungler has to come and help you out quite a bit, right? Yeah. If you can't get your back going, if you're going up against a mid laner that's really putting putting on pressure, like the Talia or the LeBlanc, both banned away, um, then, yeah, you just need an extra bit of a push. Well... See whether it does pay off here is now Kid thinking about going back to his Gragas. That'd be an exciting pick. It has been locked in. There's now as a tie, of course. Likes to play with a few hovers first before he gets things done. We'll just see what he decides to take away. Yeah, just reminding people <laughs> yeah. that he's got a ribbon going. Mm -hmm. But Braum makes a heck of a lot more sense. Very standard pickups here for IG, not showing their hand at all yeah. with these two. Very standard purple side. One, two. Get the Braum, get the. Gragas, both of them really solidify your A, the lane's going to be fine, and B, your late game team fights are solid. And at the same time, it doesn't give away really anything. So you bring out three picks coming in your blue side. You, get the, you know the victor pick comes through. You know the rec side might be a thing, right? And then you can just pretty much your last three picks are just outright responses. Well, this makes a lot of sense. Of course, Thresh has been banned away a heck of a lot. The most played champion here for Shu. So, more than happy to lock that one away. Chimin thinking about going back to a bit of a more meta tank in the Rek'Sai, as opposed to the Graves for the last two games. And it feels like in the eyes of a three-game series, they go straight back to standard. And as I say that... Oh my goodness! So Deft, of course, debuting it here, this uh, split of the LPL. The Callista has come back. We saw Imp hovering it in earlier series as well. So there has been shades of Callista, but not too much. We saw, in fact, Def do incredible things on the champion in EDG's phenomenally quick victory over GT and paired up with a Thresh. I mean, that's a strong lane. Yeah, I mean, when EDG picked it, it was kind of tiptoeing around the pick. They had the Alistair pick early. They saw that they were going into Tom Kench, and once they really realized that it was a free lane, they went for the, the alistair Callista combo. But it seems like... Callista Thresh coming back. Yeah. They didn't really even need to see what the AD carry pick was. All they saw was the Braum, and they just went straight for it. Now, last time we saw Callista Thresh, it was just the go-to lane. Are you kidding me? Okay. Rookie was looking at the Twisted Fate, and I was thinking, Rookie's Twisted Fate. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. This is going to be really scary. Sort of like that, that wave clear, you know, into the victor. Of course, you can deal with those mini waves. No. Let's play Fizz. Let's just <laughs> kill people. They have purple side, but they don't even need to wait for it. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can hold that pick, but they said, eh, I don't think so. We see a Callista, we see a Victor. We can, I'm, we're, they're pretty confident that they can support the pick, so they just went outright for the Fizz. Zatai better have a top laner that's even, that justifies this. Damn right. That is a gauntlet. If ever I've seen one be thrown by an Invictus Gaming roster, of course, Rookie has always been an outstanding assassin player. But this, of course, could be Zatai's pick towards the top side of the map because it's Zatai. Oh. There's no champion he doesn't play. That's true. That's a good point. Could just very well be a top lane Fizz, a 
which, yeah, does play well to Zatai, and at the same time, hey, it's uh, fairly flexible. And at the, I guess that actually, yeah, that's, I, yeah. I, I kind of expect that to be a Zatai pick. Does make sense. Fits into the, the, the Zatai mold. Mm -hmm. As of course, I understand, you know, any confusion, because, of course, it was saving game number one. Very, very different player than Zatai, mostly because Zatai is very different from anyone else. And Akon is going to take away his rumble. Super comfort champion. Does give Saint this massive amount of AoE magic damage. And then a lot of room to be now given to XQ on this Callista to really get around the map. But I would love this. If there's anything that you're going to hate as a Callista, it's an Aurelia. Okay, so they do lock it in. But it's a really smart pick ban coming in from IG. The Fizz could have really gone anywhere. You can't... At that point, Saint did not know what they were going into and which lanes they were picking for. The Rumble pick is going to have the the constant shove, sure, and they and Saint should have a pretty s strong and solidified team fight. But the lanes look really scary for IG. Yeah, and of course, Kid having a heck of a lot of early gank pressure on this Gragas as well will be able to set IG up if they want to go for that early snowball, which. By the looks of things, honestly, with the lack of wave clear in the mid lane, might be something that they have to do. Yeah. But hey, if there's a team that can really get this Fizz going, it's definitely going to be IG. They play around their mid laner quite a bit. Oh, yeah. And so you, now you got to really be afraid of if Fizz ever gets going, he can go top side, he can go bot side. Really, this could be just a massive threat. You could tear you apart. But on the other side, I mean, Saint have picked up some different ones for themselves as XQ and Shu on that Callista Thresh bottom lane, and we'll see how it goes with all of these changes as we get into game number three between IG and Saint. Well, thank you once again, Akon, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Summoner's Rift for game number three between Saint and IG. Both of these teams trying to escape relegation at this point. If Saint can win this game, they can tie themselves with IG and possibly get themselves to that fifth place spot and get themselves to safety. Not playoffs, but safety for the next split of the LPL. IG, it's all on the line. This is their playoff dreams that they want to keep alive. Is XQ possibly in trouble? Winter's Ooh, Bite. Ooh, he has to burn Flash. Yeah, Balan is actually going to throw that one down. Flash is going to come in, gets him over the wall. But big cooldown early. Really smart level one coming from IG. And so, of course, with everything on the line, as you said, put it into that level one should give them a comfortable early lead laning phase. Yeah, and is actually Saint's bottom lane continuing to move towards the bot side? So not wanting to react with any sort of lane swap. Yeah, when I said comfortable, I meant that they can survive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right now, Saints, Thresh, and Callista should be able to still lane versus Ezreal Braum. That uh, should be an easy lane for them. But before, they had a decent enough kill pressure, it seems. Yeah, and remember, no exhaust used from Baolan as well. So flat summoner spell advantage here for IG. Is the tie going to help Kid out this red buff start? And we'll see whether he goes for a level 2 sneaky gank which is what led Saint to First Blood last game. Mm -hmm. So now we see a position where we're going to have to focus on this Fizz pick. We haven't seen Fizz in quite some time. Yeah. Definitely might have some real difficulties surviving early against Victor. Victor can, yeah, um, pressure him. So the eyes are going to be on how Kid and Rookie play one on another, Whoa, actually. Oh, sure. Already getting stunned up by the concussive blows, taking so much damage. The heal came in, but first blood goes down in the 2v2 march. Will possibly fall, but plays with the fog of oh. war. XQ picks it up in the end, and can he use that martial post to get out of the way? But no, bopped with a door, and Bowland picks up the kill. They challenged them on that. That was, 
a flashless Callista, and they said, you know what, we are going to challenge you. You, you think you can take this 2v2? Let's find out. Well, my really well goodness. Played. Marge got himself an assist as well as first blood, so definitely ahead. Grabs himself a cull. XQ with a longsword now in his back pocket after his first kill. But my god, more of that please, boys, because that's an exciting way to start the game. Yeah, and so they could have even ran away with it. Two for nothing. Well, Chimin actually finds the gank onto Baolan here as well on the bottom side of the map. Stands behind one of his minions and the teleport's now coming in. Chimin locks down the kill, but double TP actually comes through. Cancelled immediately by Rookie. So Ty doing the same thing. So Saint answering back. Equal 2-2. Two, two. An interesting call. Saint did challenge because really it just came down to a matter of time. If they can get the kill and back away before the TP's really finished. So that is a major advantage for Saint. They get the kill and on top of that, no TP's to help out the bottom lane. Well, Chimin actually just going to tunnel right in here as well. Creative gank pathing and Marge looking for an opportunity. Doesn't have flash. Arcane shift now on cooldown, but does create enough distance. They Chimin still looking for more. Just wants to get him out of this lane. And yeah, just pressuring him completely out. Whoa. Chimin got to be a little bit careful. So now... IG's bottom lane needs to make a decision because they are falling pretty behind. If they go right back with no sums, then you got to believe that it, they should get picked out outright. They're at a, or at least they're going to be at a level disadvantage soon enough. Yeah. XQ about to hit that level four. Shoves this wave in though, so Margin Balan with decently safe position at this point. But don't want to be getting shoved around. Especially after getting the first blood under the Callista. Will mean that Saint might potentially be able to get themselves free back in here at the same time, so evening out that item discrepancy. And as you saw, Braum had to really ward out because this wave was crashing in and <laughs> they got enough attention as is. They don't want any more they don't want any more deaths coming to their names. Oh no. Well, there's an extra long sword, a dagger there as well. XQ filling up his backpack with weapons. Make his way back into the lane. Looks like he's going for that uh, early Blade of the Ruined King. Pretty standard stuff here for Callista, of course. Want to get to that Hurricane and the Blade of the Ruined King as quickly as possible. We'll see whether he decides to get Build Draw to Cutlass into Hurricane, something like that. We've seen sort of the timing of both of those items being a little bit evened out as a tie taking a lot of damage on the top side. Yeah, so that's going to be really interesting to see how XQ manages his itemizing, his itemizing because... Yeah, sure, he's got a good lane, but it takes him quite a long time to really get going. Yeah. Perhaps will work out for him, because it takes him about an equal amount of time for Ezreal to get his build going, too. So, it's all right. Well, you can see Rookie getting a lot of attention here, and this is okay. The fact that Otto does have to play so defensively is a big deal. There's the flash body slam, though, as the exhaust has come through. Bao Lan picks up the kill somehow, as Rookie had the urchin strike, but it doesn't matter. That's all they needed. Yeah, so that was really well played. The bot lane was shoved in, so Bao Lan said, hey, you know what? I'm free. <laughs> yeah. Don't throw in a party. And so that was really well, that was great. So they really needed Fizz to get opened up in this lane, and that's exactly what happened. Well, At a see. small cost, of course, in the bottom lane. Yeah, very good point. So Marge has to try and weather this storm on his own. Mystic Shot, not enough to get that cannon creep, which is devastating. Otto does manage to get his hex score on his first back, though, of course. Remember, 125, 125, 100 gold. 1,250 gold is what I meant to say. The question is, how close is XQ to level 6? Because now it looks like the five-man unit of Saint is heading on down bot. Oh, very scary. Halfway to level 5 for Marge. So it's just been zoned from a lot of the experience. Only three extra minions crashing to this wave as well, so Shu will have a lead. As Acorn has level six. Looking to get an equalizer here into this lane to follow up with a potential dragon. Hook doesn't find it there from Shu. But Saint definitely have the inside track for this Infernal if they'd like it. And looking for a dive, actually. Equalizer lands onto Marge. The heal goes down, but it's not going to be enough. Acorn burns him to death as Balan underneath the turret is in trouble. In goes Rookie, picks it up with a playful trickster as now Shu. Looking to get some work in. Chimin's going to fall, so Ty grabs that kill, and now Saint 
grouped oh. up as a unit, but my god, this Aurelia going off now in the back line as Shu trying to get out. But there's a turret there, buddy. And this is going to be a problem. Gets the triple. Could it be the Quadra now for Zatai? And it is as he locks it down. Four for the Aurelia. That was really well played by everyone on IG. So, ev of course, like M Marge doing... Let's look at once again. He sits on top of the Rumble ulti. Of course, he really just wanted to get right back onto the turret, play and set the fight up. That was well played by him because while he dragged the entire team towards that turret, that meant the double TP that came down from Zatai and Rookie really was just able to clean up the rest of the fight. And Rookie getting himself over the top with that Urchin Strike there as well. And there was no escape here for Saint. Good aggressive play, but just flat out didn't pay off. And a big quadra to start this one off. Zatai is all of a sudden completely unstoppable. Yeah, so that was really risky coming from Saint. They really needed the level 6 on Execute to make that work. They were a bit impatient. I guess they didn't know how close he was to that Callista ulti because they forced it. And then now Rumble sitting in this lane for how long? Yeah. While Zatai was farming up a storm in the top lane, they realized they needed to do something because otherwise Rumble would have been in a really bad position. And of course, IG had the answer. They had the response. They, at the sacrifice of Marge and Baolan, they cleaned up the entire fight. Most certainly did. Kid able to take down his wolf camp. Shimon came in. Void Rush now available as well, so he can get himself around the map. There's a few tunnels put down. Mostly on the bottom side. Is XQ and Shu still doing phenomenally well in this lane? I mean, they're 46 CS in the lead. Something like that. A ludicrous number. But the rest of the map not going the same way. Mm. As Otto's got a lead, but I mean, we were expecting that. There's five stacks on the Dark Seal for Rookie. Yeah. And he's just ready to go off. And this is really, really well played from IG right here. They know that Saint's only strong point right now is in the Callista Thresh. So... Every time Saint sets up and looks for that bottom lane dive or pressure, Kid is just waiting. Kid is just looking. And at the same time, Rookie is constantly, every time he shoves out wave or every time he takes the wave in general, he just rotates toward the bottom lane for any skirmish that ends up happening. Like on trying to keep himself heated. On this bottom side, Equalizer is available and they know that they've got Soul Vision. He's been waiting here for such a long time as Chimin steals away the red buff on the other side. They must be getting impatient. You have to be. It really is just farming forever. At this point, if Acorn's backs, it's just you're conceding defeat. You're conceding yeah. so much. Well, in goes the fish as Otto now has to be careful. Chum the Waters does a lot of damage as now Rookie. Oh, the timeout! As now the Equalizer just not quite enough. Acorn can't get it onto Rookie, and he walks away, but Otto survives. Acorn just can't get anything right at this point. He's falling further and further behind. That one mid play was perhaps his, his only hope, his shining hope. He comes back, and it's like, well, that didn't work out. Now they're looking to lane swap this. Yeah, it's potential undoing now as the tie is going to turn up here in the mid lane. Transcendent Blades forces the flash. Shimon was looking for the dive, but it's a tie, uncharacteristically. Patient holds back. Ah, uh, yes. Doesn't go in. Yeah, at least realized he didn't have flash, so he's like, hey, you know what? If I had that. <laughs> he probably tried, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he, probably, he was probably spamming that button, didn't realize that it was on cooldown. Well, I do. are going to answer this lane swap. Make sure that Zatai does get that one on one, force Acorn into a bad situation. Uh, I feel so bad for him at this point. You kind of have to be, because even when they looked at, to swap that out, to get him away from this lane. Guess what happens? He, they just respond by putting Irelia back bot. So now he's actually turned into a pseudo jungler. Yeah. And he's now backing one more time. Understands that he'll just get killed. So he can't set up for a play on this bottom lane. Because every single time he does, Kid is in the wake. He's waiting for it. And he can't go into this lane because he's going into a massive CS differential. And a four kill Irelia. Just terrifying. Now Rookie looking to try and hold on to this wave, but you can see Otto's wave clear, pretty strong. It's Chimin did find his way into this lane unseen. But you can see IG's bottom lane, they're just, they understand that they have to play super far back. They are not the focus this time. Mm -hmm. It's all about Zatai, it's all about Rookie's assassination. 
and Maj just needs to get whatever CS he can. This is a rare moment where I actually like IG not doing anything. Because <laughs> <laughs> very rare moment because now they finally forced Rumble to take this wave. They finally forced Rumble to actually stick to his lane. And so if he's if he's actually just sitting here Oh, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, Flash immediately comes out, but it's a tie going to force him into an awkward position. Does have the Flash, but decides not to follow Chimin out as he tunnels his way to safety. Kid looking to try and get a gank onto this mid lane as Otto doesn't have Flash. Remember, there's the barrel immediately. Perfect aim. Kid's Gragas has always been brilliant, and Zatai picks up the kill. And that's why you picked the Fizz, because it's just it just feels like, hey, if we have that much synergy, and if I am the premier Gragas player, yeah. <laughs> that... Quite honestly, they play around mid so much that at this point, if they feel like feel comfortable in snowballing his matchup, then pick that snowball pick. Oh, it's working well. Kid's explosive casts have always been good. Yeah. Just a joy to watch his XQ looking for Marge. In goes Bell Land, but he's trying to find another... Oh, doesn't get it. Rend just couldn't come out in time, and Marge is able to pick that one up. 1v2, a little bit too optimistic there from XQ. Yeah, now it ha that was the most desperation play I've seen. He had the support coming in there. Maybe he gets that pick. Maybe it worked out for him, but that's too many maybes. He, he, right now, the game, the hope of Saint was on his back. Yeah. You can't play recklessly like that. May have understood that, you know, maybe he needed to try as the equalizer goes down. Zatai flashes out of the ways. Chimin and Akon do need to be respected. Especially when you're a rumble, of course. Levels mattering more than anything else. Mm -hmm. He's still level 9. So massive damage in that flame spitter. Yeah, doing quite a bit. They burned the flash on that. And at this point, <laughs> Rookie could do anything he wants. Yeah, and he looks like he's doing anything he wants right now as well. It feels like a Sue needs to be the support in the mid lane because he he needs to be constantly between mid or bot. And he needs to help Victor and Callista out. And that's that's an impossible task, I'm gonna be honest. She's a paramedic this game. He's like, I've gotta be everywhere helping everyone. It's just a little bit too difficult. It's a stressful job. Right? Yeah, it's a life of a solo key support. <laughs> well, XQ and Chu find their way back down towards the bottom side of the map. Dragon is up and has been started here from IG. Looking to grab themselves this Infernal Drake. Marge chucks down a ward. Shimon will be here for a potential steal. With three members, it would po also potentially be death with no flash. So Infernal hey. Drake falls down and IG, that's two. If this is the IG we get to see, then newbie better watch out. Yeah. This is... Uh, and game talents better watch out as well. Remember, they're the oh ones yeah. that are more likely to get toppled if newbie can win in our next series tonight. That's true. So all eyes are on the next set just as well if IG take this win. And <laughs> if they're playing this aggressively, kind of <laughs> have to believe. Shout out to Chinese Fizz as well. He <laughs> makes a lot of noise. <laughs> the best possible way, though, is the type. Holding onto this minion wave towards the top side. And Acorn denied almost everything. He'll get that one melee minion. Oh, no, he won't. This is a disaster. Zatai is getting the camp treatment. He is taking the entire enemy team right now. He needs to watch out. Well, there's the equalizer. Zatai, welcome to walk down the red carpet. Teleport comes in from Rookie. As now Berland makes his way around the side. Kid with a brilliant body slam. And Rookie just deletes XQ. He'll get a double kill as he takes down the bottom lane to follow up. Here comes Victor. Yeah, and Chimin and Akon now trying to run away. Can Otto get here in time? Gravity Field, oh, just unable to get there. But his teammates do make it out. And IG thinking about what they're going to do next as Marge gets a decent damage on this outer turret. I reckon if that victory actually stepped a little bit too far forward, he would have died too. Oh, yeah. So a good decision from it all. all it looks like he may just now, oh. as the fish goes a little bit wide. Chaos Storm avoided by the Playful Trickster, but Otto flashes forward, gets the Q damage. Gravity Field slows down Rookie, who tries to turn it around. Kid makes his way in. Playful Trickster up one more time. The Bop's going to be there, and Kid picks it up with a flash. These guys are playing like they've been playing together for years right now. Almost feels like they have. That is... <laughs> oh, see you later, Akon. He ain't an oak tree today, Raz. He and yeah, Rumble, when he dies, is also another... <laughs> oh, dear. Paying some respects to Rumble there. But man, that's... uh, Yeah, they are, they are one person right now. Kid and Rookie. Oh, yeah. Jungle mid lane synergy. We you have to remember as well that they're both, you know, Korean and Chinese. Exactly. How they managed to make a play like that happen, just beautiful. Kids, 
or at least, I mean, Rookie's integration right now. I mean, China have, has been incredible. It has. He has, he understands the language really well, able to communicate incredibly well. Well, right now, certainly paying off. This kid can head on over the top. Utilize, oh, the value on there the Raptor sense. Immediately Crocs gets rid of that ward. And that's actually execute. bad. That's bad for the rap. That's bad for the Raptor sense because you kind of want it for just getting rid of any kind of objective you're walking. Towards. Yeah, if you're walking towards a brush and yeah. then, like trying to gank. That's a good point. So, but he, he did find a scrying old ward as well. So it was like, oh, look at all that vision dying when really probably wasn't a great thing. Yeah. Hey, you know what? It's uh, it's like an extra camp. Whoa. Okay, you gotta watch out. You gotta you gotta watch yourself, rookie. He's chumming waters everywhere, Raz. He is just every time it's on cooldown. That's not even a good thing. <laughs> Remember, you miss every fish that you don't throw. So, just making sure he has as much hit rate as possible. Yeah, IG needs to watch out. You, you keep throwing ulties like that. You gotta recognize that Saint can take fights. Well, Chimmin, just gonna zone Rookie away from this tower. This is what happens when you don't have the wave clear in the mid lane and Saint just all collapse, take that one down easily. Yeah, IG needs to stop going for that victory run. The game is not over yet. Yeah. Play smart. Don't go back to old habits. At this point in time, you have a lead. Play as a unit. You use the Fizz. Walk around the map. Use the Aurelia. Yeah. There's a monster right now. Clears up the bottom out of turret. So still continuing to get that lead forward. 6,000 gold approximately here for IG. There's a tie. He's got a target painted on his head, and IG know it. So they're setting up for the potential counter. This is what I love to see from Bowland. Bowland playing around Kid incredibly well. We have not seen that from Invictus Gaming supports in general. So, yeah. I don't, I don't oh, Chimmin's going to turn up into three people. No, only two people. This kid got out. Oh, another fish is going to go wide. Playful Tricks to get Rookie out to relative safety. But there's the Chaos Storm. Otto is caught up to him. Nice search and strike onto the little sure. Raptor. But Otto's got so much movement speed, thankfully. Rookie with the cooldown reduction is going to be fine. And Otto now possibly in trouble. Not slowed by the barrel as the tie was coming over. Akon looking for Marge. Will get it there as well as the Flame Spitter just burns him down. IG, what are you doing? This is a victory. They, you've not won the game yet. <laughs> like, you may have gotten that snowball, but that doesn't mean you can play... Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. You know what? Scratch what I said. Yeah, take it all back. Yep. The tie is still a one-man team. I guess Satai can pretty much clean up for the rest of the team here. That was a lot of damage. He's building towards about five different items at this point. Mm -hmm. Has the Hex Drinker ready for the more of Malmordius. And a uh, hammer to be built towards his Ghost Blade. And of course, a Ruby Crystal towards anything. Most likely the Randuin's Omen. Which I really do like to build second for that extra health. And the slow. Yeah, and the... Uh the passives for both do quite well, just in case. So of course he gets the extra MR and yeah, pretty much yeah. And on top of that, the cooldown reduction is always nice. So yeah, and it already has 30% as well. This is now going to go back to base. We'll see what he finishes up. Still 45 CS in the lead, but Acorn has done decently well getting himself back in. Leandri's torment on the way as item number two. And I do like it. I mean, it's a bit of damage control, but make sure you have as much early penetration as possible. Mm -hmm. Do you actually see a black cleaver coming out of earlier here? Ah, uh, yes. This is something that Zatai's done. Mm -hmm. He's the he's the guy that likes to build black cleaver Trinity Force. Doesn't mind the fact that the phage procs don't stack. <laughs> Just wants to do as much damage as possible. An easy 40% CDR as that is going to be the third Infernal Drake. And Chimin caught out of position. Does oh. take the lantern, but that barrel was brilliant. And Kid flashes over and grabs a well-deserved kill. Body slams forward. Nice slow to XQ. But IG say that's all we need. We got triple Infernal Drake. That is so many stats. And this game is very quickly getting out of control. Great bonk on the head. Like, Kid played that really well. Was able to burst down the dragon with the help of his team. And then ults him out of the Thresh Lantern. Just ridiculous. At every point, just made Chimin's life hell. Yep. It looks like Otto just gets dead. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. He's just dead. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's a dive. There's a Ty's looking to try and do the same thing here on the top side of the map. Legendary comes out from the Aurelia, who ignores the turret, smacking on him. We'll take down that turret. And if that's a sign of things to come, things are looking grim for Saint. Yeah, and it's definitely looking kind of grim for Newbie as well. 
you got to understand, they're watching this game. <laughs> they have to be. Yeah. And they're looking at an Invictus Gaming that's definitely learning. That's definitely improving. He's going to get slowed. Chimmin, very tanky. Rookie, able to move pretty quick. That's a fizz. So that's only some brown bags for Chimmin. And Rookie will have that playful trickster up once again. Yeah, it's a fizz. I have a feeling he's out. What is he doing? He's dodging the Prey Seeker. He's and just good. wandering casually. He's just playing around with him. He actually eat in the opposite direction. He did. XQ is going to fall extraordinarily low as Fate's called defensively. As XQ turns around but doesn't quite find it. As the communication was a little bit off, IG grabbed two swift kills as Otto now has to run away from Zatai, just dashes ah. forward, Blade Surge grabs the kill, and he's happy to tank the turret on his way out. Now Rookie's still able to keep Chimin from doing anything, and Akon misses the brush that he really wanted to throw that one down. The Equalizer doesn't find the Fizz, and IG, mm. this is a transformation. Yeah, and that's pure unmitigated tilt coming from <laughs> That is just... Unfortunate, especially you really got to mitigate that tilt. <laughs> you have to. It's 10 kills, 10, 0, and 2 from Irelia, and she's just bursting people down with just her Q. It's at this point, I don't want to say it's already over because IG, even though they feel like that, they, they were actually at a point where they were losing, they lost their mid tower, they lost kill, they, like on the, in the top side of the map, they were losing stuff just because they were kind of playing a little lazily but if you have this much of a lead you definitely can't that's definitely true is x here just gonna oh pop as rookie My God. yeah sticks a trident into him and that'll do that as he is extraordinarily strong that is 10 stacks on his dark seal Majai is to come in hopefully soon he's got his onions like this fizz is ridiculous yeah, and it looks like IG's response is that they're just constantly looking to hide and make picks in the side lanes. Right now, anyone on... S and we're going right back to this replay. Yeah, I think I've <laughs> seen this movie before. As Chum the Waters comes out, Saint have sent some cavalry in, but Chimin, oh my goodness, is it going to be enough as he's burning down? But no, the Zonyas comes in, but it's not enough. And Shu's able to pick up the kill, and Chimin barely survives with the passive... Eating up that rage. Oh, oh, I take it all back. Marge snipes him out, and the Baron falls for IG. Okay, IG is playing <laughs> this incredibly well. They're a team right now. They know what's on the line, and they're playing with their food a little bit. Here we go. Well, Otto slammed into the wall there. Throws down a good Chaos Storm, but Marge is going to just delete him. Zatai gets another Blade Surge, and will be able to take down basically anyone in one auto attack. 11 kills. This is despicable. You can't answer them. You legitimately cannot put anybody on these sideways. Saint had a team comp where they would, they would, they had, they can pretty much like shove out these waves, right? And then, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Uh, why, why'd they put a camera to his face? But it's not fair. But yeah, they had a team comp where they can shove out sides and make plays mid, but they legitimately can't even do step one because they are so far behind and IG knows it that whenever they set one person, two people, even three people on one side lane, the Fizz or the Aurelia will just clean up. And the Fizz and Aurelia both have teleport now as well, so Baron can now be delivered to all three lanes, and support can arrive. And I feel like if you send five people to kill Rookie, and Zatai sees them, it's just going to kill him, as Shu will probably die right now. Yes, GA. Oh, well, Ward is going to see the Aurelia. My goodness. So Otto at least has wave clear. It has to be a mentality thing, really. Oh. Oh. Yeah, like, at what. this point, it has to be a mentality thing because we've had these problems of inactivity, of not really moving around the map when Zatai was on the roster before. So, of course, now you bring in Baolan, and sure, Baolan is really doing well to work around Kid, help and be the extra helping hand for Rookie, right? Maybe that's the difference. But at the same time, we're seeing Satai and we're seeing Kid, be, or at least Rookie, be a lot more responsive with these TP plays. And when they play, to play reactively, they do it on time. Yeah, damn right they do. Akon there was able to win out the trade against Rookie. Chum the Waters will be available very soon, though. You can see Zatai just nursing this Siege minion. Is XQ trying to get what he can done to this minion wave? We'll yeah. do so. IG want this inner turret on the bottom side of the map. Baron Creep is so strong that they're legitimately just becoming Shepard for the yeah for those waves. 
That is two Guardian Angels already done as in goes Kid. Nice flash to get Chimmin out. As Double Slow comes in. Chum the uh -oh. Waters lands on XQ, the exact right target, and he just evaporates. Double kill comes in for the Ezreal as Akon doesn't last very long. That's a quadra kill for much. My god, welcome. welcome to IG, my friend. Welcome to the team, my friend. Welcome to the team. That was amazing, and IG will follow it up with a victory here as well. Otto's off to the side, and he's not even going to live as the tie wants to lock this one in. Uses it <laughs> as a reset and cleans up the minion wave. Invictus Gaming came here to play in games two and three, and this roster's looking good at the back end. Yes, they are. This is the team. This is the roster they want. Baolan did so well. Marge showing that he has mechanics. He's got and the, the carry pants is what he does. You saw him on your screen right there. Looking a bit shocked, to be perfectly honest. It's all about believing. It most certainly is. <laughs> and Saint, you can see a little bit of distress in their eyes. Game number one was beautiful out of this team. Games two and three, a very different story. Had a lot to do with this man that you can see up front for IG. Zatai fitting back into that top lane and looking so good. And having fun with it too. Oh, yes, he team. was. I talk about external factors. This could be a good thing. This could be a bad thing. Like, if they get this massive lead and they're running away with it, feeling so happy off of it, I just hope that they don't look at this and go back home and think, you know what? No one can take us anymore. You yeah. got to start working. You got to keep going hard. Yeah, that's exactly right. And hopefully they don't, you know, rest on your laurels, I think, is what is what you were talking about. Yeah. So, IG, definitely have a task on their hands. But if they keep this roster together... Things look brilliant. I mean, that was two quadra kills that game. One for Zatai, one for Marge. Of course, Zatai recently coming back after a bit of a break. And, of course, Marge recently stepping onto the roster for the first time, looking really, really good. Rookie Sphiz as well. I mean, we were questioning the pick. I thought maybe not enough wave clear there in the mid lane. They did lose that outer turret. But those words were swiftly eaten as he basically consumed everyone on the map. Yeah, exactly. And so they understood that more than anything else. If you don't have enough wave clear... You know, usually that's a bit of a, 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 a your, you know, point that you're afraid of, right? Because you're like, yeah. well, is IG actually going to react to that? Are they going to actually prop Rookie up and, you know, utilize his assassination and, you know, snowball potential? And I think they did. Yeah. Balan was with Kid every step of the moment. They were, it was essentially a 3v1. So yeah. that was a really good look from this team. Most certainly was. And this was IG going back to this sort of 1-3-1 one, one style that we've spoken about before, but they played it out so exceptionally well. Yeah. The fact that Marge and Baolan knew that they were falling behind early. They were behind about 70 CS to S XQ's uh, Callista, but they knew let's just not die. Exactly. That's all they had to do. Yeah. And at every point, yeah, sure, if they, they had that mentality of just like not looking to die, but at the same time, their team was actually responsive and helping them out. Yeah. That's something that I was always worried about with IG. And do you feel as well like Bialan's really sort of added to this team the ability to bridge the strong top side of the map that IG have always had to that bottom lane? Do you feel like the kid and um, Bialan synergy is the big deal here? It is a big deal. It's been a massive deal with this team for a long time is that they've had supports come in and out of that house, right? Yeah. And now they've got a support that is actually playing around and then I would assume communicating with them quite well. Yeah, and it's looking really, really effective. Of course, we have to mention Kid. I want to have a discussion about who you think the MVP is going to be as well because I'm feeling like it'll be Zatai, but I want it to go to Kid mm -hmm. because Kid played out that game so, so beautifully. Yeah, exactly. And so that's, what, that's a key moment as, uh, for a team, right? Yeah. Because if you have your carries doing so well, but the people in the back, like the, the Graguses of the world, the, yeah. the Brahms, right? They set you up so well. They put up that alley-oop, and they really just slam-dunked it. Yeah, they most certainly did. It was fantastic out of both of them. Of course, Rookie, we haven't spoken about too much, but did get all of that attention. Kid was there. He was in his lane. He was standing on a ward at the beginning, but what he was doing was creating space, making sure that Victor couldn't harass him out, made sure that he could pick up all the farm underneath the turret. He was even by about that stage where you think that Victor should have that, uh, I guess, momentum swing where he can just clear out waves. Just stunningly well played from IG. And the fact that they controlled the game exactly how they were supposed to throughout in order to make what was a relatively unconventional team comp work to perfection. Yeah, and on that point, I just don't want people looking at the results of this game and saying, you know what, Saint taking out, uh, or at least uh, IG taking out Saint, that's something that, you know, we expect yeah. that. But Saint played really well that set. And on top of that, IG 
you know, took it up a notch to be able to knock them down a bunch. So now we have to look towards the next set and say, actually, this is a really strong point for IG. And hell, this is even a strong point for Saint. They shouldn't be so depressed. I mean, kind of have to be after that kind of a loss, right? But take it, look towards the future. This is the team. This is the lineup that you want. Just kind of build off that. Yeah, and what you've got to do is utilize that momentum moving into potentially relegations or even into the next split of the LPL if they can find a few victories and IG don't get so lucky. It is going to be difficult. Saint are up against EDG next. But let's have a look at who managed to pick up the MVP. I'm incredibly excited, and it is going to be Zatai. So yeah. 12, 0, and 2, 45% kill contribution. But that doesn't matter. That's because he was just killing people by himself. Yeah. Anybody who walked up towards him, he just demolished. 12, 0, 2. That is just an absurd number, really. Yeah. So they played it well the moment they got an, a, a small lead, right? This was the scary I don't think point. it was a small lead. I think it was a quadruple. <laughs> it snowballed. Right? Yeah, it snowballed <laughs> after that point. But they, IG knew what to do, right? Like, legitimately, this is the start of all bad things at this point. Marge and Ben play really well, play it close to the tower. So, in a moment, Zatai is able to just kind of come down, help the team out. Fizz already did pretty much half the, half the work. Yeah. So he just cleaned it up from there, got the kills. And so the real worry was what are they going to do with that quadra kill, right? Uh, usually, IG, you know, they get this lead and they fumble with it. But once they got these kills, once they got this massive lead, Saint played it well. Saint yeah. decided to, hey, you know what? We're not going to take this matchup. We're actually going to send our entire team to look and make a play on this bottom lane, right? Yep. And IG just were not having, they weren't having none of it. They pretty much always helped their, helped their team. Bao Lan was always there. Kid was always there. You know, pretty much always waiting for that TP reaction. And so the longer that happened, the longer they waited, uh, the tie was just farming up a storm. Yeah, this is the thing. And I actually wanted to talk about this as well because Acorn sat in that brush for so long. And all March was doing was just darting back and forward from that minion wave. Always had his arcane shift at the ready. Mm. Never put himself into a position where he was ever able to get hooked. Never in danger. Yeah. And it gave Baolan the ability to leave the lane. He headed towards the mid lane. They picked up a kill onto Otto. He was roaming around the map following Kid. And March knew that all he had to do was not feed the Callista, she can get farmed. That's absolutely fine because they've got an Aurelia to destroy him. And it was just beautiful watching them understand exactly how they were supposed to play that out. Yeah, and it really just came down to one key mistake for Saint, and that was roaming to look for that play in the bottom lane when Callista didn't have level 6, right? Yeah. They, uh, pretty much once you get level 6, suddenly that play is much easier. But they really forced it. They ha they look for the hook. And of course, Marge is playing that well, right? He's yeah. playing just out of hook's range. He's not going to get hooked. So they forced it and forced it. And then Zatai was just in the top lane getting small, small leads. Yeah, and look, if you're GT now looking at this team, GT and Nubi, of course, both of them tied for that third place position. GT don't have the head-to-head -head over IG. IG... One of their now three victories is against that team, both of the other ones against Saint. So GT have to start getting scared. If they can't win anymore, and they haven't looked like they've been able to, it's six losses in a row for this team. Mm -hmm. IG are looking like they're making so many more positive steps, and GT are actually stepping back. Exactly. So, I mean, GT had to be watching that game. They really yeah. had to. At this point, that's a really scary point for them. So they have to be taking this seriously because the IG is playing well. They most certainly are. And of course, our next series is going to be Newbie versus GT. And that only emphasizes it even more because Newbie have been looking better as well. This is a team that has been getting their early game in shape. They've been moving around the map. They've been shoring up what was their identity crisis that they had. And if GT can't win, then that is going to be the big problem because that gets them to that third place. Taking this victory separates these two teams. And whoever loses is then going to be the one scared of IG. Yeah, and so GT have been a team that's been left in the dark, and not in ter not just through the rankings, not just through the, the standings, but also based on their play. They're yeah. a team that they don't make a lot of early plays, and on top of that, they kind of wait until the game goes on, they get their composition, then they look to fight. The only team that's really doing that right now to that certain extent is like WE, but WE's have perfected it. Yeah. WE is a team that they not only play with that composition to the scale, but they actually play towards their strong side or look to trade. Don't, GT doesn't do that. Yeah, and we're also going to be... Uh, it, it's going to be a very different story as well because if we have a look down, GT are going to face off against uh, IG as well. So that play style difference hmm. 
is going to be a big deal. If yeah. IG can continue to play this early pressure, one three one assassin style of play, I don't think GT's strategy necessarily uh, stacks up to that. And of course, didn't in week number two when IG took them down in a swift 2-0. Uh, see, but that's the, that's the thing. Can IG do it? They're a team that they've always shown that they can, right? Yeah. They've always shown that they can get to the top of the mountain and then just slide right back down, right? <laughs> so they're a team that, quite honestly, you just don't know what you get game for game. You can yeah. see an amazing team or you can see a team that just sits there. Yeah, well, it's actually a good point. We'll see whether they can continue the momentum because, of course, Game Talents is going to be their next matchup. It is going to be this week, I believe, as well. So hopefully, I mean, not too much time has passed and they can stay on this high horse because Invictus Gaming after that series, first game, awful. I just did not feel like uh, Invictus Gaming had their hearts in it, to be honest. But games two and three, complete and utter turnaround. And hopefully that's going to stick. But that's a good thing. That's honestly just the first game was great for IG simply because they need to learn that lesson, right? The yeah. thing about Group A that we've talked about quite a bit was about competition. We saw a lot of competition in Group B. You saw a lot of learning in Group B, right? Yeah. In Group A, you just see teams that are saying, oh, well, we can take these free wins. We kind of, we're sitting in these playoff position spots. No one, no team on the behind us is really challenging us in Saint and IG. Yeah. But now IG has been playing around with their rosters. They finally got something going. And Saint, yeah, they got they got a couple of changes, mostly in, in their AD carry position with S2IZ, but now they look phenomenal. So yeah. now with, the, with both teams really back in it. You know, well, anything could happen as we have a look at some highlights from that game. This is where it all started to go wrong from Saint. Yep. As Rookie started things off with a kill and then everyone else dies to the power of Zatai. You gotta believe it was just a little bit before this too, which was like where it really went wrong. Because it really was farming, farming, farming up the storm, right? It felt like Rumble was just sitting there for far too long. And so once they finally force it, a really struggled force, IG knew that. Yeah. They knew it was a point. And the old IG probably would have waited there for a little bit too long on their TPs, but they reacted immediately. And this is another example of that exactly as Kid turns up in the nick of time, everyone just gets there, and IG capitalized on everything. Saint just looked like they were trying to make proactive plays, but they were doing it, and IG already knew where yeah. everything was happening, as this was that beautiful bait out of Rookie and Kid. Was a bit of a mistake, of course, missing the chum in the waters, but they just switch around, and Kid says, well, I got a full health bar. I'm going to take you down. Yeah, that's something that, honestly, IG should look back towards and say, what were you doing for that past, like, five minutes where... Honestly, Fizz was just throwing out ultis randomly. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, it, it just kept happening. So, sure, they had a massive lead. Zatai was actually the only one really taking it that seriously. So, so that's a good thing for IG. Yeah, it's definitely a big deal as well when you mention the fact that Zatai is the one taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> Zatai is often the one that isn't necessarily taking it seriously. Is that last team fight, the big quadra kill coming out of Marge, the big welcome to Invictus Gaming. He has been there for a couple of weeks, but hasn't necessarily been that big influence so yeah. far. Yeah, definitely. And now what they have, their full roster, right? Finally, they're probably, you have to be confident in Marge. Yeah. That's great for IG. It's absolutely fantastic. But we are going to throw it to a short break, ladies and gentlemen. When we get back, Newbie and GT battle for that third place. Don't go anywhere.